Hi, it's Rose from the Painted Toad Online Art Studio, and I teach people how to find their inner artist and feel more confident in creating art. And if you are surviving this polar vortex today that's hit most of the country, you might be looking um, for a little virtual field trip to someplace warm. Well, I can't really take you there, but I can take you there through art. So I have a fun little flamingo painting I'm going to show you today. And uh, let me switch over. And why don't you join along? You can watch. And then when this is done, you can always come back and try this painting yourself. So I'm going to switch my cameras over so you can see my workspace here. There we go. So you should be seeing my little flamingo. Now this is actually two flamingos. I have a mama and a baby. And, um, you know, if you're interested in these little templates, um, just let me know in the comments. And if you're watching, pop in and say hi. If you're just scrolling through, you know, jump in there and say hi, Rose. Um, and uh, I'd love to hear from you, hear where you're from, what you're doing on this snowy winter day, if it's snowing where you live. And so I'm going to set these aside and we're going to get started. So first things first, uh, we're going to start with the uh, the beach. So we're doing a beach scene. These flamingos are going to be a nice beachy scene. So if you are surrounded by snow right now and you want to dream of someplace warm and sunny, then let me take you away, right? My mom always used to do that, Calgon, take me away. So we're going to let art do that for us today. What I just added here was a little bit of titanium white and um, I have this buttermilk, it's um, deco art, but any sort of a shade of cream, any sort of a um, cream will work or even, even a light yellow would work for this. And I'm using acrylic paints, this is acrylic paints. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to dip my brush in the cream and I'm gonna kind of divide this little scene here into thirds. So if you think of, um, you know, the lower third's gonna be the beach and then we have some water and then we'll have some sky up here. So I'm gonna add this in and add a little bit of white. And if you're just joining me or if you're just scrolling on by, this is Rose from the Painted Toad Online Art Studio. And I teach people, um, how to create all sorts of art, paint, um, clay, all sorts of different things. I do a lot of different um, projects, a lot of crafty projects too. My motto is uh, when you're doing art, you might have a lot of different kinds of art that you like to do, or maybe you haven't found your specialty yet. So I know people who, you know, might say, well, I'm not good at, you know, painting or something like that, but maybe, maybe you just haven't found the medium for you. So I'm, I'm all about multimedia art, trying different things um, until you find one or several things that you like to do. Art is more about creating and finding something to express yourself, express your feelings. Like today, it's cold, it's snowy, my yard is buried in snow. Um, so I wanted to go someplace warm today. And I thought, well, why don't I take you with me? All right, I'm just cleaning my brush here. And now what I'm gonna do is um, I am going to work a little bit on the sea or where I am in Michigan. I'm from Michigan. Um, we, you know, we have the lakes here, so we don't really focus so much on the sea. We have the lakes. So I need a, a little bit of um, teal paint and I've got some, this is a turquoise here. I think this will be nice. And always with paint colors, if, if you're interested in this, you know, I can always send you a supply list for the different paint colors. Maybe I'll make one of those up. Um, but with paint colors, paints come in so many different colors. And, you know, you have different kinds. You have like, you have your artist acrylics, and then you also have your um, craft acrylics. Um, so I use a little bit of both. Um, I, I do a lot of paint mixing, but if you're the type of person who's not into mixing your paints, you know, these craft acrylics work great because you can get them in a variety of different shades. You can just pick out the shades that you like and, you know, it never has to be a certain specific shade. 
All right, so I'm going to add some blue here. I'm just using a flat brush. If I didn't mention that before, I'm using a flat brush here, which is perfect for doing these types of landscapes, or in this case, I guess we'd call it a lakes, a lakescape. We're going to es escape to the lake. I guess it would be the seaside, though, if we were escaping, because Michigan lakes are rather cold, even in the summer. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm adding some blue in here. And then what I'm going to go back and do is I'm going to add a little bit, um, a little bit of white in here, just a touch to kind of lighten it up as I come down. We're going to get kind of an ombre effect here. So a little bit of white in this teal. And I'm bringing it right down to the edge of the beach. There we go. And this is just a little five by seven. These five by sevens are great for doing little samplers. Um, sometimes when I'm trying to plan out a larger piece, I'll paint it first on a five by seven so that I can kind of get a feel for, you know, when and where I should do the different colors and things like that. So I'm also going to add a little bit of this. Um, uh, this is sour apple, but really you just need like a yellow green. Let's start up a little bit here. Just to add a touch of green, get a little bit of LJ into our into our water here. And I notice I have not cleaned my brush. You don't have to clean your brush in between every color here, especially when you're working with something like the sea. Now, if I'm going to go back and work in the sand, I'm going to have to clean it because I got blue and yellow and stuff all over this brush. So you can see there with the light, um, the light yellowy green, it kind of adds that warm seaside glow. Get a little bit of algae in there. And then on um, last but not least, I'm going to go right on top of this. Now, I am I was going to use just a regular blue, but I had purchased this ice blue for a different project that I use. It's um, one of the Deco Art Dazzling Metallics. And that is the thing about craft paint. They have a lot of fun, different paints. They have like I think pearl paints and uh, you can get matte, you can get glossy, you can get glittery paints. So there's a lot of fun things they do with uh, craft paints. So I'm going to take a little bit of, it's a kind of a metallic blue, and I'm going to kind of swoop this in at the top here. I'm just using the edge of my brush, and that will give my water a little bit of shimmer, which will be kind of cool. And of course, with anything like that, I'm going to take a little bit here, maybe blend it down a little bit more. Get some little shimmery spots, maybe where the sun is catching those waves and making them sparkle. Plus, anytime you work with any sort of glitter or metallics, at least me, it's like, ooh, I'm going to add more. So, there we go. All right, are you feeling it yet? Are you feeling the warmth of the sun? Are you getting those beach vibes? So there is our lovely beach with the water. Okay, so let's see here. I'm just cleaning up the brush. I just did that, and I want to always make sure your brush is dry. I don't think you can see it on here, but I've got my little paper towel. So I'm always making sure my brush is dry in between. Otherwise, your, your water will get in with your paint, and then you'll have really runny paint. So that can be frustrating. So you don't want to do that. All right, now we're going to paint um, the sky. And let's see here. It's going to be very similar to my water color, except I'm going to add just a bit more white. So I've still got my teal and my white here. I'm going to load it up on the same brush. Um, you could mix it, but I kind of like to, um, to mix my colors right on the uh, canvas here. Because honestly, it gives you kind of a, a streaky sky-like look. So I'm going to just add this in here. I'm going to make it a little bit darker towards the top. You know what I just realized? I forgot to tell you. My teal is also metallic. Huh. I forgot all about that. As I'm doing the sky, I'm like, why is the sky looking so shiny? Um, because my teal is metallic. So we don't call that a mistake. We call that a, ooh, I meant to do that. Or, oh, that turned out even better than I thought it would. 
sometimes when people paint or they take a painting class or something, they're so worried about making mistakes that you can't, can't be afraid. You just have to go in there and slap the paint on there and see what happens. And hey, if it doesn't turn out right, at least you had fun doing it. So I'm doing this nice little ombre effect here. I got the darker up top and then I'm just adding more white as I go to the bottom. So as I'm getting closer to my water's edge here, it's coming down here. And I'm gonna use a tip here just to clean up that edge just a little bit. And I'm kind of allowing, now my, my water's still wet here, but I'm allowing the water in the sky to blend, which actually looks pretty cool. It gives it that hazy, far off look. It gives us a little bit of an atmospheric look here. All right, so this is the beach so far. So what we're going to do is, um, let me check here. My sand is pretty dry. Um, I was going to put a little bit of beach grass down here, but let me just make sure my flamingos, I'm going to leave some room for them. I think I'll put the, the beach grass maybe off in this corner and then um, my little flamingo can go on top of it. So for the seagrass or beach grass, I need a little bit of my green. I can use that yellowy green. Um, or I could use a different darker color green. Now this is kind of a fun and bright picture. So I'm going to do a combination of both. I still have a little bit of that, um, what was it? Sour apple green, which was that yellow green. I've got some of this. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll use this one. Okay. So this is kind of just a dark green. It says, what does it say? Dark green. <gasps> oh no. What did I get my painting? Oh, it just dried acrylic. No problem. Aha. Okay. <laughs> Tried acrylic from the lid. Okay. So sometimes you have to, ooh, this one's really stuck. Hold on there. That's why, because it wants to squirt out. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of this. I really don't need a lot. This is a very small painting anyways. And I'm going to close this up again so that it doesn't dry out. If you're just joining me, this is Rose from the Painted Toad Online Art Studio. And we are doing a beach scene here because the world is full of snow where I live. And I just needed to go someplace warm. So I'm doing it through my paintbrush. So if you're joining me, um, I'm using StreamYard today. So to do any comments, um, you do have to give StreamYard permission if you want to comment and say hi. Um, tell me what you're doing today. What are you doing on your snow day? My kids have the day off, so they already spent a little time out in the snow. Not much time, though, because it's pretty cold out there. Uh, and so now they're watching a movie while I am painting. All right, so I've got my little bit of seagrass here, and I'm just using this small round brush, kind of brushing it on here. I can bring that up a little higher if I want. Get the edge a little bit here. There we go. And uh, I used, for the seagrass there, I just use a little bit of this yellow green. It's called sour apple, and then some dark green, some dark green acrylic paint. Um, if I want to, I'm gonna, I can take a little bit of this darker green. This is, okay, so... Somebody somewhere is going to have to tell me how to say these. It's phthalocyanine green, I think. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But anyways, it's kind of almost um, a teal-like green. If you mix this green with white, it turns kind of teal. So I'm just going in right here, and I'm just adding a little bit of dark green just to give some shadows to my seagrass. So a variety of greens there, if you can see it. Um, I feel like my, my grass is a little bit too neat and tidy, though. So I am going to add some other colors. Ooh, my water's turning a pretty blue here. All right. So let me add a little bit more of the light green. And I'm just going to kind of shoot some of the seagrass out this way. Like it's kind of growing wild here. There we go. Add a little bit more of the light green on top. Make sure my brush is dry. Hopefully you can see that okay. 
Yeah, sometimes when the brush is wet, you can see here, it thins out the paint, and craft paint tends to already be thin, so make sure your brush is dry. Sometimes my brush, I pull it out of the water, and then this nice heavy drip seeps down and, you know, contaminates my paint. Okay, oops, I'm gonna get the edge here too a little bit too. Don't forget your edges. This is just a very thin 5x7 um, acrylic or not acrylic, I should say canvas board, five by seven canvas board. So it, it doesn't have the thick edge like a regular canvas, like, you know, a canvas like this. This is a little eight by 10. It's got the thick edge. So a lot of the, the ones you can get. So this is a canvas board and it's just a piece of board that has your canvas texture on it and it's all gessoed and ready to go. Okay, before I do my flamingos, I know that this grass is going to be a bit wet here. Um, my C is almost dry. So I'm going to mute myself because I'm going to do a little um, drying here with my hair dryer, which is really handy to have, um, especially if you're, you know, doing something like this where you need to dry it quickly. Now, normally um, during my painting classes, we do a lot more socializing so people can talk and, you know, socialize. And so it takes us a lot longer. So usually our layers and things are dry in between in between things. So I'm going to turn my mic off just so I don't blow blow out your eardrums with the air, hair dryer. I just have to find it on here. I found it the last time. Ah, there we go. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Note to self, secure your flamingos before you do the hair dryer. They just flew away on me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of figure out what, where I want my little flamingos. I could kind of, this would actually be kind of cute, wouldn't it, to, to line them up just like that. So we got mama and baby. Baby was suggested by my daughter, Violet. She said that I should do a baby flamingo. So we have little baby here. And I'm just going to use a pencil um, to trace around these. I drew these little flamingos and I made a template um, usually for my uh, art painting classes and things. Uh, I will make a template because I know not everyone is comfortable hand drawing something like this. It's nice to have a little guide because there's nothing like getting your beautiful seaside scene all painted in nicely. And then you try to draw a flamingo and it looks like an elephant or something. <laughs> okay. There we go. So I've got mama there and I don't know that you'll, you might, yeah, you can see the pencil line there. And I'm going to put this little baby right here. I was looking up coloring for these. And the mamas and daddies are pink, of course. I mean, that's what people are used to. It's because of what they eat. There's, there's your first flamingo fact. I know some random flamingo facts because my daughter, Violet, who loves flamingos, did a little report on flamingos, so she learned all these really cool flamingo facts. And so the first one is they're pink because of what they eat. But the little babies, they're kind of a grayish white. 
so they really aren't very pink. So that will actually look good with my little mama here. I'm just kind of tracing in where the eyes go. Now, some people when they paint things like this, they will just paint the pink right on here. But something that I have found is that when you have a darker color like a blue or something and you're trying to put something like pink over the top, it really just doesn't show up well. The, a lot of times you can still see the background color Kind of showing through so there's a little trick you can do in order to avoid that from happening and that's called masking so i'm using some white acrylic and i am just going to paint this flamingo shape i'm going to paint it all white first so i'm painting it all white first and then i will go back over the top of this and i will add my paint it just creates a better finished look um, and it, it keeps the background from showing through, especially if you have very thin paints. Sometimes, especially if you're using craft paints, because craft paints are tend to be thinner. It depends on what kind you're using, but painting it on top of here, you're going to end up not being able to see it. Now, I can see little baby's outline here. I don't know if you can see it very well. Might be able to. I have the, the bright... Um, my window is open and so the snow is everywhere and it's so bright it's kind of blinding but it's really great for lighting for doing a video like this but i can't really see my computer screen so i can't really tell what you can and can't see in the video here i'm using a flat brush again i'm just kind of see how i tipped it to the side just to kind of angle down where the beak is and notice how nice and slow i'm going when I was doing the background, we're just going back and forth. There's nothing fancy or special. Backgrounds are fun like that. But when we have something a little bit more delicate to paint in, we just slow it down. And the flat brush is nice. Look at this edge here. It creates a nice, smooth edge. Just pulling it down like that, and I get that nice, clean edge. I love my flat brushes. It's like my favorite brush. Here we go. All right, so we've got mama all masked in here and you might be wondering you know what about the legs we will add legs i will add legs when the time is right but for right now we're just masking in the bodies if you're just joining me pop in say hello you have to give Streamyard permission but say hi this is rose from the painted toad online art studio and today's goal is to transport you to someplace warm and sunny. So we're headed to the beach today, checking out some flamingos. All right. And the cool thing is this should dry rather quickly. I do want to do my pink over the top of that, but I am going to mute myself again and just dry it real quick so we can move on to pink. You don't really want to go right on top of this with your color because it'll kind of peel away the white and then, then you don't get the uh, effect that you were hoping for. So I am going to mute again, dry this real quick, and then we'll get into the pink. All set, ready for pink. So I've got this light magenta, which is pretty bright pink. Um, an alternative is you could create pink with red and white, but I am gonna tone this pink down a little bit. This is a little bit brighter than what I think I want. So we'll do a little bit of color mixing here. Of course, if you get craft paints, you can always, you know, pick a variety of shades of paints to do your flamingo with. So always, always 
whenever you are mixing paint color, you want to take the darker color and put it into the lighter color. So in this case, I'm taking the darker pink here and putting it into the white to get a lighter shade of pink, like so. And I'm probably going to create a couple different shades. I could... If you want a kind of a coral color, you could add a little bit of an orange to give it a little bit more of an orangey um, hue, but that's kind of up to you. So I've got my two shades here. I think I still don't really want this this bright, so I'm just going to take my dirty palette and just kind of mix it in there just a touch lighter not a lot just a little bit here we're going to make this very vibrant today warm sunny vibrant colors because all i see out my window right now is white everywhere bright bright white snow all right let me make sure i'm going to clean this brush here my water is blue so I'm going to make sure I rinse all that blue out and make sure my brush is nice and dry. And then I'm going to start with the dark pink here. And just paint right over the top of the area that I masked. So this white area, paint over the top of that. And the beak itself is kind of black and white, so we'll leave the beak. And I'm going to bring this, using my flat brush again, remember what I said. It's got that nice straight edge, so you just swoop it right down the neck. And make little noises while you do it. it makes you feel successful. Look at that, isn't that lovely? I love you, flat brush. All right. Are you warm yet? So what is everyone doing on this snowy day? Are you doing something creative? Painting something? Cleaning something? That's what I'm trying to avoid. My daughter Lily decided she wanted to do the laundry and I said, go right ahead. I'm going to paint. <laughs> oh, I should get them together though. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll paint this when they're done with their movie. They need something creative today. So I'm just bringing this around. Now, in order to, I could just paint right over the baby's head, but since I can still see that outline, and I'm going to be doing the baby a lighter pink, kind of more of a whitish pink, um, I'm going to, I'm painting around it so I don't lose my baby. So it takes a little bit of finesse here to get around there. You can use the edge of your brush here. If you got a real thin spot, just Stand it up on end and then just bring that corner edge down. There we go. And if, you know, look at, I kind of squared up baby's head, but that's okay. I can still see the eye and the beak and I'll go back in and round that out later when I paint the baby. Okay, let's finish. Let me push this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. And if you're just joining me, this is Rose from the Painted Toad Online Art Studio where I teach people to find their inner artist and get more confident in their creative and artistic skills. And connect in the, at the same time, you know, connecting with other like-minded people, people who like to create. There's nothing like a community to help build your confidence. So that is what we are all about at the Painted Toad. I'm just gonna go up here and add a touch more pink. There's a couple little thin areas. Just gonna thicken it up. All right. So if you are joining me or you're just popping in, gotta give StreamYard permission, but then you can comment and say hi. 
Tell me what you're up to on a snowy day if it's snowing where you are. All right. Now that we got Mama painted and I'm going to do the light pink for Baby. Baby's kind of pink and white. So I'm going to go in here. Paint some light pink. There we go. Is it cute little baby? using my flat brush or using acrylic paint today. Soak up some of the moisture in my brush. I can tell that my paint is getting a little watery here. So just soaking it up. Here's another little trick. If you get a little water on there, you just take the end of your paper towel and just kind of dab it, soak it up, and then go back over it with thick paint. There we go. Oh, this is the cutest little baby. So today we are visiting, virtually, artistically, we are visiting a warm and sunny place. So there we are. Okay. Oh, while that is drying, I'm going to work a little bit on the beaks. Um, yeah, I'll work on the beaks. Sometimes I change my mind about what I want to do. So if you hear me, you know, I talk to myself as I'm trying to make decisions. I don't know if there's anybody else who does that, but that's what I do. Um, I do need a little bit of white here because I did mix all of the rest of my white up with the pink. Clean that off there. Just not like just barely a drop. I don't need a lot. And I'm going to go in here and paint a little bit of the big flamingo's beak. Up here, so I'm just kind of getting in this area right here, and then the tip of the beak um, is is black. So I'm doing this part white, and I'll go back with the black later. We're going to do some black outlining later. I am going to paint little baby's beak uh, all white. Baby doesn't really have black in its beak. They're more of a gray and white. At least that's what the pictures look like online. There. So I'm working with some pretty small brushes. We're on a 5 by 7 can canvas board, which is a great um, practicing canvas practice. So if you're the type of person who gets intimidated you know, you look at a great big canvas and you might think, oh, I can't paint all that. That's huge. Well, start with something small. Start small. And then you can always work your way up to something a little bit bigger. So, all right, let's talk about round brush. I do like to use flat brushes a lot. And one of the reasons is a round brush can be a bit tricky um, to get the knack of. Because if you push too hard with it, it'll kind of make a big blob and it'll kind of, um, you know, you're trying to make a nice, clean, thin line and then you push too hard and it's like blob. So when I do the round brush here, I'm going to barely um, press on this brush here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, I'm going to paint here a straight leg coming down from my flamingo and I'm barely pushing. Okay. So here, I'll show you what I mean. So if you push too hard on your round brush, if you push too hard, you're going to end up with like a big flat, you know, blob. But if you want like a nice thin line like this, whoo, you barely touch the canvas. See the difference? So that's kind of tricky with the round brush. Um, I'm not saying don't try it. What I'm saying is, you know, just be aware of that and maybe practice, you know, do a little bit of practice. All right, let me see here. I think what I'm going to do, because I put this back leg kind of way back here, and if I, if I put the other leg way back there, that's going to look weird. It's going to look like my flamingo goes a little unbalanced. So I feel like the other leg should really start over here. And so I'm going to bring this leg coming this way. Oop, better load up my brush. That's the other thing. Make sure you get enough paint on your brush. It's easy to be consistent. 
when you got enough paint on your brush. If you got to go back and get more, sometimes it's hard to, to pick up where you left off. And then I'm actually going to bring this back in this direction for that classic bent leg of the flamingo. Now you can't see the feet. I did the feet kind of out of view. So we don't have to worry about feet today, but I am going to give you this amazing flamingo fact. And this is one of those other cool things. I'm going to add these little knobs right here. And you might think, oh, you're adding the little knobby knees. No, I am not. I am adding the flamingo's ankles. So there you go. Another crazy flamingo fact. This bendy part is actually the ankle. And so this part's like the bottom of the foot. The flamingo's knees are actually up here under their feathers. Isn't that cool? So now you will always know that these are not flamingo knees. They are the flamingo's ankles. And then I'm going to give little baby here some little legs. They kind of have short little legs. And they'll kind of go this way. We'll get this little guy. And the ones I looked at, like their little legs were real thick. They weren't long and skinny like the parents. All right. I'm going to, now I could attempt here, and I think I will. I'm going to use my round brush here to do the beak. Um, but if you would rather do a flat brush, you can do that. And here's a little trick I do to help balance and steady my hand. I kind of balance with my pinky finger. And so that keeps my hand very steady as I'm trying to paint this in here. And if you're like, oh, I can't do that, well, you know what you could do if you don't feel like you're ready yet for painting in, you know, fine lines and details like this, you could use a paint pen or you could use a black Sharpie once all this is done. So that is a little trick or a little hint. But I do recommend that you still practice outlining Maybe not on your paintings right away, but when you get comfortable with it, then you can take them to the paintings. There we go. This is looking so cute. I'm so excited. So glad I did this today. All right. We're going to add a little bit of an eye here. And their eyes are like right there by that little white part of the beak. And I'm going to add a little bit of a line. I'm barely touching here because if I touch too much, then it's going to have a big fat mouth, which I don't want. I'm going to add baby's eyes down here. Little baby. Maybe a little bit of a peek here. Just a touch. Just kind of add in just a little bit. I'm not even really filling it all in because it's small and delicate. Okay. So our flamingos are looking rather flat. And the last thing we're going to do is... Um, add a little bit of feathering here. So I saved my pinks and uh, I'm going to take this lighter pink here that I created. I'm going to actually keep a little bit of the dark pink and the light pink I'm using. I went back to my flat brush again. Now you could also do this with a round brush, either or, but I'm going to just kind of paint in some feathers. And this brush, hold on, I gotta dry it out. I didn't dry it enough. There we go. Let me just touch that too, because that's wet. Soak it up with some paper towel. Okay, there we go. And I'm just gonna kinda create a little feathery texture here, just kinda just kinda sweep in my brush. Sweep, sweep, sweep. First, I'm doing it with the light pink. To give my flamingo a little bit of a wing here. Maybe a little bit of, I'm even going over the edge here a little bit. That's fine. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this darker pink while it's still wet. And just kind of let that go right on top. And I'm not mixing, mixing, mixing. I just want it to kind of add some shadows in there. You're just joining me. This is Rose from the Painted Toad online art studio and we are creating flamingos in February. That is really fun to say. 
flamingos in February. Okay, um, I'm just going to add a little bit more up here. And you know what I'm doing here? I'm just taking my brush and just kind of kissing this flamingo here. There we go. Just kind of dabbing it. Dab, dab, dab. And then I'll do a little bit here on the chest as well. I'm just dabbing it with the light pink. Dab, 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 dab. Get a little bit of feathering. And I'm just kind of making this up as I go here. So, you know, I like to add textures to things. It makes them look more interesting. There we go. All right, that's looking better. And let's add a little color to our baby. Now, our baby is real light pink. So instead of doing the light pink with the dark pink here, I'm going to try and do white with light pink and see how that turns out. If it's not dark enough, then I'll go in and add a little bit of the dark pink too. But let's try first. We're going to try lighter first because they're supposed to be super light. I'm going to do that same swoopy, swoopy pattern there. Just kind of swooping my brush down. And, you know, whenever you do feathers or fur, anytime you're doing an animal or something like that, you want to go in and, you know, paint it in the direction that their feathers or fur grow. So I'm not going to, like, paint it all going up, sticking up or something. That's not how their feathers grow. They kind of grow down the back. I'm going to add a little bit of white here on the baby's head. I'm just going to brighten that up a little bit. There we go. It'll help kind of distinguish baby from mama. Give it a little bit of a white head there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white down here in the body. I'm just dabbing it with some white. Some little feathers there. Okay. Now the only thing I feel I need a little bit, I am going to take just a touch of this pink here, but I don't want to go overboard because if I go too dark, it's just, it, it'll take over and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to add just a touch of this darker pink on my brush just to add a little bit of pink on the back where the feathers are of baby. Just to kind of darken it up a little bit. There we go. This little painting is almost done. And if you're just coming in and like oh I want to paint that <laughs> you know you can you can um, I think what I'll do is I'll put um, a list with the supplies and I'll give you a link to this video and then you can paint along with me on another time once you get all your supplies together so there we go okay so last thing, um, I might just do just a touch of outlining. I don't want to go overboard because if I do too much outlining, I'm just adding a little more white to my baby here. Just the top. It's top feathers. Just for texture. Keeping it thick. Okay. And last but not least, I am going to do a little bit of outlining um, with my round brush here just a tiny bit because I don't want to overwhelm it if I do too much then you know it might not look all that great make sure my brush is dry this is always the part it's like oh it looks good and then it's like okay now I'm going to try to outline now it's serious okay so I'm going to add just a touch here See, I got real quiet there. I don't like that. So here's the thing with acrylic. I'm going to leave it there, and I'm going to come back with a little bit of white, and I'll fix it. But you got to let it dry first. If you try to fix it too soon, uh, it won't work. So I'm just going to do a little bit of outline in here on my flamingo. And I am barely touching the canvas here. Because I don't want a big heavy line. I just want it to kind of 
get a little bit of a, I say that a lot, little bit, little bit, I'm sorry. Just a touch, just a dab. Kind of just do a little outline in here. A tab of black. Not too much. And, you know, if you're looking at this thinking, yeah, no, I'm not going to outline. I can't do that. Then don't. Leave it without the outline. You don't have to add an outline. Something I do as I'm outlining, you can see all these little marks on here. I kind of dip it and I don't want that much paint so I get a lot of it off. Or I might reshape the brush a little bit so that it's going to cooperate for me when I get in here to do the outlining. There we go. Do a little bit here. And it's okay if some of the lines are thick and some are thin. You know, it, it's not about getting the perfect thickness of a line. That's what we have digital art programs for. My daughter has a drawing program on her um, Chromebook, which is pretty cool. But it will anticipate the line. It's kind of fun. Because it anticipates what you want to do, and then it fixes it for you. Which, as an artist, I appreciate that. Because sometimes outlining can be a real nightmare. There we go. I'm just kind of going in here and adding a couple little lines for the feathers. And then let's add a little tiny bit to baby here just to distinguish it from the background. Not too much though. I don't want a big heavy outline. Same with baby's head. Just to kind of separate it a bit from the mama. Get a little bit of the beak over here. A little bit there. I'm just barely touching. And maybe just a touch here on the wings. Okay, so that part that I didn't like, it should be nice and dry. I'm gonna do one last, this is the last thing, little touch up. And of course, should also sign my work. Always important. Take pride in your work. And I take this and add it to that part of the beak that I added too much black to. See how I did that? Voila! Fixed. So, that little bit, no big deal. Went back and fixed it. Because that would have bothered me. I am a type A all the way. And, uh, Little things like that bother me. I still have a painting, the one actually behind me when I go back to show you um, my face. The painting behind me I painted is Lake Superior. And it's it's one of my favorite paintings because every time I look at it, I think of, you know, our trip as a family when we went up to the lake. There's a hidden beach up there that we know. And I can't tell you where it is because it's hidden. We don't want anybody else to know. <laughs> there are a few people who do know and I just I look at that painting and it makes me think of it but I never was happy with the grass how the grass turned out and I keep telling myself I'm going to go back and fix the grass and I will because it bothers me that much I will go back and fix it someday but today is not that day all right I am going to sign this and let me see how about well, I could do it over here in my seagrass could use black or white. I think I'll just use black over here. And sometimes I sign these with uh, without a a brush because sometimes it can be it can be a pain signing with a brush, especially on these little canvases. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it here today. All right, and there we have it. 
I hope I have transported you someplace warm and sunny. So think about all the times you've gone to the beach, gone to the lake. Think of your summers at the lake. Close the window so you can't see the snow. <laughs> think of it as a, a white snowy beach out there instead of a white snowy wintry. Oh, it's crazy today. All right, let me switch back here. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to tell you about. Let me just switch my camera here. Back to my, here we are. Okay, so you see, I was talking about Lake Superior. This is one of my favorite places. And ooh, there, if I go that way, see the log, like the driftwood. So lots of good memories there. All right, so I say so a lot, oh my goodness. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Here's our little painting. Let me try not to drop it on myself. So you can actually see, yeah, that was me. I actually did paint that. It's our little, our little flamingo. Not something you'd see at Lake Superior, but that's okay. So this was fun for me today and I hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, if you wanna do more art or, or a Book a party. I do painting parties all the time. I do a lot of different types of art because my feeling is not everybody's a painter. So if there's something you want to try or learn, you know, reach out to me. I do a variety of things. I do have a class coming up and I want to share that with you before I go today. It is for making this door hanger. I call it Love Spring. Ooh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Working with the video there. So this is Love Spring. And I'm actually going to be making this on March 20th, I believe, which is a Saturday. This is not a free class. So if you are interested in signing up, it's $15. I give you the whole supply list. I'm going to walk you through how to make the whole thing. And here is the cool thing. So these are the colors and things that I chose for mine. But you can totally customize this door hanger to fit with your own decor. So obviously, you know, my our last name is Gottler, so that's why I did the G here, but you know, that's not your last name. Maybe it is something, some of you might be. <laughs> Any Gottlers out there? Anyways, um, let me see, there we go. Okay, so yeah, so you can make this and you can customize it however you want. Um, and I'll give you all the supply lists and I'll tell you different things you can do to get it, you know, a little bit different, make it unique, make it, uh, make it the way you want to make it. So that's another big thing with art. Sometimes we're more comfortable following along and that's fine too. You know, you can follow along and I give you the links to do it exactly like this with all the colors and things like that. But for some of us, we like to, um, razzle dazzle it a little bit and kind of make it our own. And that's, that's when you really start to grow as an artist. When you, when you get out there and you uh, take on those risks and take on those different challenges and aren't afraid to experiment. So hopefully I can help you become uh, more creative, more artistic, and get connected with more artists like yourself. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye.